Hi guys, let me show you how you're going to use transformations today. So we're going to do congruence transformations. You might want to write this down. This is what we mean by a congruence transformation. Two figures are congruent if and only if there is a sequence of rigid motion transformations. So that means we can use a translation, a rotation, a reflection. This sequence has to map or it has to move one figure to be on top of the other figure. Then the two figures are congruent. And what's cool, it doesn't just have to be triangles. This can work for segments. This can work for quadrilaterals. This can work for any kind of a figure. These are called congruence transformations. So once again, two figures are congruent if and only if there is a sequence of rigid motion transformations that maps one figure to be on top of the other figure. So for instance, let's look at number one. I claim that there's a pair of congruent triangles here. I want you to identify them. It's certainly not this triangle. It's these two triangles that are going to be congruent. So let's actually do number two first. Let's write the transformation so that I can map or move one of the triangles onto the other triangle, and then we'll write the congruent statement. That's the most important thing I want you to recognize. So look at this triangle right here. I claim what we should do is take this triangle and let's reflect it over this line. This horizontal line is y equals 1. If we reflect it, the point i doesn't move. q is 3 below, so its new image is 3 above. s is 4 below, so its new image is 4 above. And look at the figure that we have. So the first thing that we did, the first thing that we did is we reflected it over the line y equals 1. But now look, we can translate it and we'll be done. If I take this point q, this is the new image of q, I'll call it q prime, here's i prime, here is s prime, notice what happens. If I move i prime 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left and down 1, it's on top of the v. Of the v. If I move q prime 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left and down 1, it's on r. If I move s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left and down 1, it's on a. So if second, if what I do is a translation where I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the left and down 1 unit, that makes a correspondence between two congruent figures. So notice there's another way to write this. You could write it this way, or if you wanted to, you could write it as a composition. First, we do y over 1. y equals 1. We reflect over y equals 1. And then we translate it. Second, 5 right and down 1. This is what the composition would look like. And now, notice that's your answer to question number two. Now look how easy it is to answer question number one. We can write a congruence statement. So R corresponds to Q, A corresponds to S, V corresponds to I. So I know that the triangle VRA, that triangle corresponds to IQS. So I didn't have to use SSS or SAS or ASA or any of the other postulates that we have for making congruent triangles. I can do it by using transformations. So the only thing you're doing differently today is to identify which figures are congruent. You want to write down, like we talked about yesterday, write down the transformations that you can use in order to put one figure onto the other figure and then name them. Name the congruent statement. That's your only goal for today, a very simple application of what we've been working on in class.